Yo, welcome back guys. In this video we want to calculate the total deformation of a rod with varying cross-section uh, that's uh, subjected to an axial load like this. So the way that we do this is we use that same formula. If you remember we had our, our total deformation uh, was equal to PL over AE. Maybe let's clean that up a little bit. PL over A. E. Well, when we have a uh, when we have multiple cross sections like this, or if we even have uh, any of these things changing throughout the length of the rod, so if there's like an applied force somewhere, you know, like on this surface or something, um, or or halfway through the rod, you see that sometimes. Uh, just any time that we have a change, we just treat this as a new section, and we actually end up solving this problem by parts, where we say we have uh, the total deformation is going to be equal to the sum. Of uh, of each of those parts, and then we uh, we take uh, the information uh, just one part at a time, just like that. So we have a i over e i. All right. So anytime there's a change in cross sectional area, uh, as we have in this problem, or if there's a change in the internal force that's going on, or um, or even if there's a mixing of materials here, like if one of these is steel and the other one is brass or something. Uh, obviously, that's good. they're going to have a different uh, modulus of elasticity, and then we uh, we just solve by parts. All right, so to do this, uh, to get all the information we need, the only thing we're missing here is the areas for each. So for the uh, for the area for uh, section one down here, we can just write it like this. Area is going to be equal to uh, pi r squared, which is equal to pi times ten millimeters squared. Uh, and that gives us 314.16 millimeters squared. And for this guy, for uh, area, so let's just call that area one, uh, for area two here, uh, the larger section we have, the cross-sectional area is pi r squared, so we get pi times 20 millimeters squared. And that gives us uh, 1,200 and uh, 56.64, 56.64 millimeters squared. All right, so now we have all the information we need. We have the area for each section, the cross-sectional area for each section. We have the length of each section. Uh, we have the internal force in each section because it's not changing. It's just 150 kilonewtons uh, anywhere. And, uh, and then we have the modulus of elasticity for each section. So we can go and solve for this, uh, for the, the total deformation of the rod. So let's write that down here. We have uh, delta is equal to. Let's do uh, let's do the first section here first. Uh, so we're gonna get uh, 150 kilonewtons times 500 millimeters, and that's all over a e. So the area was 314. 0.16 millimeters squared, and E is 200 gigapascals. Now, if you remember from previous videos, gigapascals is also the same. Gigapascals is the same thing as having uh, units of kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Um, so that we can switch, we can switch out the units like that, and then we can cancel out things, and we'll be left with millimeters here. It's just nicer to work with. Um, so then we'll add in the second part here. So for uh, section two, we have the same thing. We have 150 kilonewtons times the length of section two, which happens to also be 500 millimeters, and we divide this by the cross-sectional area. So we have. 1256.64 millimeters squared times 200 gigapascals, which is also times uh, the same thing as 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. All right, so if we just simplify that, we get uh, this first term here is going to be, uh, it works out to 1.19 millimeters. And the second term here works out to be uh, 0 0.3 millimeters. So really what this is, is this, this part, this, uh, this section of the member has stretched out 1.19 millimeters, and this section of the member has stretched out 0 0.3 millimeters. 
And uh, together, when we add those up, uh, we get our we get our total deformation of the rod is 1.49 millimeters. So you can really see that the, the impact of the cross-sectional area here, uh, because they're the, the, all, all things considered, they're the same except for the cross-sectional area. And uh, when, we have a, when we have a significantly larger cross-sectional area here, we get a, we get a significantly smaller deformation uh, in that part of the rod. Um, but then again, together adding them up, we get the total deformation of the rod, and that is uh, 1.49 millimeters under this particular loading.